So when I think about the justice system, there's so many things that need to be changed. At the, at the most basic level, we think about the difference between consequence and punishment. The consequence is about change, punishment is about pain, and we built a system that is rooted in punishment. We built a system that has said, you have committed a harm and we're gonna harm you in ways that are retribution. We have not created a system that says, you've done a harm and we wanna set you up to change that behavior in the future. What that looks like is a whole lot of things. So. You know, some of it is changing what we've deemed a crime, that at the basic level, a crime is just an action with a consequence. You think about today in Florida, theft over $300 is a felony. And in Florida, when you become a felon, you permanently lose the right to vote. That doesn't make sense. In Oklahoma, theft over $50 was a felony until 2001. Like these things don't make sense. And part of that work is just saying like, these shouldn't be crimes. In places like Chicago, it's a crime to ride a bike on the sidewalk for certain people. Like that doesn't make sense. So we can actually do a lot of work to just say like, these things don't need to be crimes. And the second part of the work is like, how do we actually fund prevention and not only intervention? So we know that a lot of crimes that happen in, in poor communities are crimes of poverty. We can actually end poverty. That like Trump just gave $700 billion to the military. It would only take $125 billion to take every single person out of poverty. We could do that. It's not about like, is there money or are there resources? It's only a matter of will. So some of this is how do we, big the, how do we dream the big dream and like push for it? And the third part, is about being really clear around uh, state violence. Is that if there will be people who are entrusted to keep communities safe, they need to be held to a bar that nobody else is held to and that needs to be deep accountability and we don't have that yet. You know, when I think about this question of what does it mean for, for black people to be accountable to ourselves, I'm always reminded that, 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 that this idea is always tinged with a little bit of like, how do we, how do we make sure that we don't blame people for being victimized? So when I think about low income communities, I'm from Baltimore, both of my parents are addicted to drugs, is that I'm really mindful not to blame people for being addicts who grow up in communities with no resources. I'm mindful not to blame people for having poor diets in places where there's no food. I'm mindful not to blame people for being poor readers in school systems that didn't teach people how to read. So that's like the first part of this. The second part is I'm interested in how do we make sure that we like resource communities in a way that set people up to make different decisions. So when I think about accountability, part of accountability is saying, is like equipping people with resources so they can make a range of decisions and a range of options. And we don't have that in communities of color, especially poor communities of color. Uh, so that's the second piece. The third piece is that there are a set of basic rules around like, what does it mean to interact with people? How do we deal with conflict? And like, we should deal with conflict in ways that don't end other people's lives. Like that is a basic given. And I think that largely the criminal justice system holds those people accountable often.